Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Only today it isn't a fountain pen. Today I'm going to review my favorite mechanical pencil, the Pentel Sharp Carry. Some of you may know that I'm a retired professor of theater design and technology. I taught architectural drafting as it relates to scenery and lighting design for over 30 years. I use this mechanical pencil almost every day during my 34 year teaching career. It is simply the best mechanical pencil I've ever owned. I've never needed to replace it as it works just flawlessly. But even though I've owned several other mechanical pencils over the year, none replaced this one. I didn't even know the pencil had a name or a fan base and was still being made 35 years later. I was at the pen store the other day and picked up this 2020 Pentel Carry and I'm going to put the 1985 carry up against the brand new 2020 model right now. Okay, what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this mechanical pencil, show some size comparisons, provide some measurements, and then do a printing sample. And stay tuned after the printing sample where I'll discuss what I like and what I don't like so much about this pencil. First, we'll look at my Workhorse 1985 carry and see what might be different in the new model. You might be fooled into thinking that this is a fountain pen, rollerball, or even a ballpoint. But you'd be wrong then, wouldn't you? Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? There aren't many mechanical pencils that have a cap like this. This Pentel mechanical pencil is more like the style you'll usually see in a mechanical pencil. There were a few things that drew me to buy this back in 1985. One was the overall look. It's elegant. As a theater teacher, I was alternately wearing suit jackets when in the drafting room or lecture hall and wearing jeans and t-shirts when working on a production. This pencil was rugged enough to survive crew work with some battle scars, as you can see here and elegant enough to wear in my suit jacket or to faculty meetings. So it's rugged and elegant, but that's not all. It is very practical in that it is short enough when capped to fit in a shirt pocket. And because it's capped, the sharp tip doesn't snag or poke through the pocket and get damaged. So in this one, you'd put it in your pocket and it pokes right through your shirt. It also has some amazing features, which we'll examine right here. From the top, we see a small chrome button, which seems to have no function at all, but it does. The chrome metal clip is springy, a little bit stiff, but it does work very nicely and clips your pencil very securely in a shirt, a pocket, or in your jeans, or in my briefcase. The enameled cap tapers up to a small beveled ring the end of the cap, and the 1985 model here has a large stylized number five and Pentel on the front and Japan on the back. Then we have a large hatched chrome metal band that ends in a clutch ring for posting. And then we have the plastic barrel, which tapers down until we get to a small ringed chrome metal cap that removes to give you access to the lead chamber. This 1985 model also has a small rod attached to that cap, the function of which I'll demonstrate shortly. The cap snaps off to reveal a black plastic section that tapers down to a brushed stainless steel mechanism sleeve. I'll call it a nose cone and it ends in the 0.5 millimeter diameter lead feed, which is non-retractable. This pencil is almost too small to write with uh, when it's unposted, but it is possible. And you can feed the lead through with that button in the back. The pencil is designed to post, however, and it posts with a positive snap, and then it's the perfect length for drawing. The cross-hatched knurled metal band has clutch rings on both sides, which allow it to be capped one way and posted 
the other way. What is also clever is when you post the pencil, the little chrome button at the top extends and becomes the clutch mechanism to operate the pencil. But it also, because it's extended, allows you to pull it out and you can see there's a an eraser there. That's a Z31 eraser. The eraser is usable in a pinch, but as you can see, this 35-year-old eraser here, I have not replaced it, hasn't seen much use at all. Now that the pencil is posted, it's very nice in the hand. And that crosshatch metal band has another function, for me at least, as it becomes a great thumb rest while drawing. I don't know about others, but my writing grip is different than my drawing and printing grip. When I draw uh, using straight edges, curves, or templates, my pencil angle is almost vertical. When drafting a line, the pencil is straight up and down against the straight edge and angled very slightly in the direction of the line that I'm drawing. I taught this technique for many years, perpendicular to the drawing edge to ensure a true measurement and then angled slightly in the direction that the line is being drawn. This is also a technique for technical pens when using inking edges. The actual edge is raised off the surface of the paper to allow you to draw with the pen with the edge of the technical pen against the edge here, but it doesn't allow the ink to seep underneath due to capillary action and smear the ink. So when you're using a pencil with an inking edge like this, if you keep the pencil straight, you're going to get a line that is right exactly where you want it. But if you angle it this way, it's going to go underneath that edge and be wrong. Or if you tilt it this way, again, it's going to be off the edge. So you keep it straight up and down like that with the barrel of the pencil that sleeve of the pencil right up against that edge. This gets to another great feature of this pencil, which I will have to disassemble the pencil to illustrate for you. Of course, this in itself is one of the great features of this pencil, that you can disassemble it fairly easily. Come on, Private, making up a certain party. The barrel unscrews. Just like that, as does the section. And then that center band is a piece of metal that uh, is reversible. So you can put it back both ways, exactly the same on both sides. The barrel has a little clutch ring on it like this. And if that comes off while you're reassembling it, make sure you get it back on the right orientation because the clutch only works in one direction. Same thing on the section. That band has to go back on in the same orientation. And you notice the other cool thing is that the, the metal band and the barrel go on over top of that little cap that caps the reservoir for leads so you're not spilling lead out while you're doing the disassembly. The nose cone mechanism also comes off just like that and it reveals the clutch mechanism which can be taken out of the section. Now let's take a close look at that nose cone. As you can see here, this is the 1985 model, and it is made of stainless steel. Now let's look at the little cap with that pin. You can start to see what the function of this is for. If you ever get breakage of your leads inside that little chamber, you can thread that little rod inside that sleeve and clean out any debris that might be in there. So it's great for clearing out uh, graphite dust or clearing a clog or a break 
that's happened in there. So that little rod is exactly 0.5 millimeters that fits inside there. And you can fit it in from either side. It's also great for clearing out the clutch because you can use that to clear out any breakage inside that clutch. Let's take a look at the clutch for a moment. And you'll see another reason for the longevity of this particular pencil is that these parts here are brass and that clutch is made of brass and it's a three pronged clutch and you can see it and that just lasts forever and then once it's inside the section that nose cone fits stainless steel on brass those threads when it goes together and so you have a very strong very durable center core mechanism of this pencil that's easily disassembled for cleaning and maintenance and then it just goes together again just this easily let's put the section back on screw down the nose cone put the knurled steel collar back on the barrel goes back on right over that cap and then you're done now the section and the barrel are both made of plastic which match the color of the cap but the cap is metal it's really hard to tell that this isn't uh, the same in fact I only just recently realized that uh, that's plastic on there by looking at it carefully they're solid plastic so don't settle for imitation now let's look at the changes that 35 years of development and evolution have brought the Pentel Carry. Here is the 2020 version of the Pentel Sharp Carry. And it comes in this little magnetic flap box. At least this one did. I seen that they come in different kinds of packaging, depending on where you get it. And it flips up and you see Pentel on the inside, a little nice uh, velour bed and there's the pencil so this is the 2020 carry and immediately the most obvious difference is right here on the branding the 2020 version says carry in block letters since 1971 in smaller block underneath and then says Pentel 0.5 P1035 Japan. That P1035 I think is the model number because this comes in a variety of different colors. This is the 0.5 millimeter version of the carry. It also comes in a 0.7 millimeter version. The 0.7 millimeter version is only available in two colors, black and a darker blue than this. And this 0.5 carry is available in this light blue, smoke gray, black, olive green, red, and pink. And apparently the pink version, if you buy that, there's a donation by uh, Pentel to the Breast Cancer Foundation. There's also an orange version, which I believe is a limited edition. So what else is different? Well, there's another difference you might not immediately tell, and that is the nose cones are different. The 1985 version is stainless steel, as I mentioned, but this is plastic. So that's no longer steel on brass, that's uh, plastic on brass. But the guts of the pen have remained the same. So you take that nose cone off and you'll see that the clutch mechanism is exactly the same. That three lobed clutch with the brass, it falls out, with the brass threading. And we look at the rear um, you know, lead chamber cover and we pull that out we'll notice the other difference there is no little cleaning rod anymore on the newer version but all of these parts are all interchangeable they're identical to each other so I can swap these parts out 
the clutch rings are identical, the barrel threads, uh, the caps, they're all interchangeable with each other. I ain't got no body and nobody cares for I mean yuck da 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 Igor. So it shows you when you have a design that's very, very successful, that over at least 35 years, I think they, and since, it says since 1971 here, so I think the carry's been around since 1971, uh, but this one certainly from 1985 has not seen many design changes over the years. So very, very successful pencil and still being made in that variety of finishes. Those changes, however, I don't think devalue the pencil in any way, from my opinion. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Here is the Pentel Sharp Carry with an Alvin Draftmatic. I like this mechanical pencil very much. It has a little dial on the back here that you can dial up which level of hardness of lead you have inside it, which is a cool little feature. And that knurled section at the front is very, very textured and very grippy. It's almost like a metal file. And here is the Zebra or Zebra Delgard. It has a cool dual spring action which cushions the lead as you apply pressure, sort of like a shock absorber, which apparently is supposed to uh, reduce breakage of your lead. And here is the Uniball Curatoga. It has a really cool feature as well, which they claim keeps the pencil lead sharp all the time. And that's when you engage the mechanism to extend the lead. Every time you click it, now in this version you can't actually see the mechanism going around because it's right in there. Uh, there is another version that has a clear section here so you can see the mechanism. But it has a cam action kind of uh, twisting motion that when you extend this it turns the lead in a circle as you click it so as you're writing with it and it's flattening one side of your lead every time you click it it rotates it so it keeps that end as flat as can be nice little feature there's the Curatoga very popular the Curatogas and here is a Pentel 120 A3DX. This one's in 0.7 millimeters, but this has a, has a great durable rubber grip on it and a nice long sleeve. So if I'm using uh, very thick uh, straight edges or uh, templates, that long sleeve on there is very useful. There we go. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a printing sample. <music> And we're back with the printing portion of the review. This is a Stettler 100% rag vellum. Vellum, for those who don't know, is a semi-translucent drafting medium. It has some really good tooth for capturing and holding pencil drawings. It is made from a combination of wood pulp and cotton. The translucency aids with using it for tracing and helps with blueprinting as well. And this is the Pentel Sharp Carry 2020 model. Now the lead I'm using is Pentel 0.5 millimeter AIN Stein HB. The AIN Stein is a super polymer that Pentel claims is the most durable, break-free, and long-lasting pencil lead on the market. Stein actually stands for Strongest Technology by Enhanced silicone dioxide integrated network. Say that five times fast. Homer, I'm afraid you'll have to undergo a coronary bypass operation. Say it in English, Doc. A fancy name for quartz silica, actually. Just silica. And now for some printing.
and for some drawing. You can see how I'm using the pencil straight up and down and angling it slightly as I draw. Same thing with non-inking edges. So here's an example of some of the drawings that would be done with this kind of a pencil. Uh, this is a lighting graphic, a lighting design graphic for a show that I did at the Shaw Festival in Niagara Lake. And uh, it shows this, again, it's very old fashioned. This is all done with CAD uh, now, but uh, there was a certain art to drawing like this. And uh, a certain amount of pride in putting a, a drawing together that had uh, clarity. And you could use one pencil thickness, one pencil lead hardness, and get a number of different types of lines and thicknesses and effects out of it, rather than having to switch up. And, and also, it shows a little bit of your hand rather than the sort of mechanical antiseptic line that you get from a CAD drawing. I abandoned, even though I abandoned this kind of drawing uh, about, gee, 1995 or so, 1994, uh, when I started teaching CAD, uh, using AutoCAD and uh, Vectorworks and things like that. Um, in the last few designs I did before I retired, I went back to drawing like this. Again, just to show my students and to show myself that I could do it again, but show my students how it's done and uh, what the joy of writing with your hand and a really nice drawing instrument can be. And so now, what do I like and what do I not like about this pencil? I should start by talking about the name, actually. Sharp Carry. The word sharp has come to mean mechanical pencil in Japan. It is to mechanical pencils as Kleenex is to facial tissue. The founder of the Sharp Electronics Corporation, Tokuji Hayakawa, I don't know whether I said that right, Tokuji Hayakawa, invented the mechanical pencil back in 1915. The word carry is derived from cows from the area of Kerry, Ireland, that are black with a little white on their udder. Uh, I really don't want to do that, Ned. Oh, come on, Homer. The designer of the carry thought of these cows when he named the original model, which was all black, of course, uh, with the silver flash in the center. Japanese, Irish, go figure. You can probably tell by now that I really like this mechanical pencil. The fact that I've used this one for 35 years and it still works perfectly is testimony to its endurance. Yeah, it's got some battle scars on it, but it's been through the wars and it still works beautifully. But I also love the elegant look of the pencil. You can carry it to a business meeting in your suit or to the work site in the front pocket of your coveralls. I love how it posts. I love how you can use the lead clutch either unposted or posted. I love the center band of hatch metal that makes it both look cool and feel great and balanced in the hand. I love the girth of this mechanical pencil. Most other types are usually either exactly the width of a regular pencil or just slightly thicker, and they're mostly like this. For my hand, having a thickness closer to a fountain pen means that I can draw much longer without fatigue. I remember being up all hours of the night, hunched over my drafting board, putting the finishing touches on a lighting design that was due to be put up in the theater the very next day. This pencil, this pencil got me through those long marathon sessions. I love how short it is when it's capped, and I love how it sits deeply in my shirt pocket. I love that capping the pencil protects both my pocket and the lead. I love how it comes apart in pieces. I love that the mechanism is made of high quality brass and a three-part clutch that feeds the lead in really small increments. 
And what do I not like about it? Well, um, nothing. I don't think there's anything I don't like about this pencil. I would complain about paying 30 bucks for a mechanical pencil when you can get a Delgard for five bucks. But will a Delgard still be in your briefcase in 35 years? Hell, I won't be around in 35 years. So, there you have it. The Pentel Sharp Carry. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you. And that's all she printed.